Hello there. So I uploaded my first ever reaction to The Sopranos just a little over a week ago, and now we are recording the finale, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's how much I guess I love this show, and it's an indication as to my upload rate for this show and what it's going to be in the future because of how much I love it and how much I am watching it. So what's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia, absolutely shooting his shot, and I have been watching The Sopranos for the very first time, and this show has been absolutely sensational. I am hooked, to say the least and we are already up to recording the season finale and by the way I am dressed you can tell that I'm recording this back to back and I just realized I'm wearing the number 12 Ja Moran episode for the Grizzlies uh jump episode for the Grizzlies the Ja Moran jersey for the Grizzlies and I just watched episode 12 and now we're watching episode 13 so yeah we're up to the season finale of season one of the Sopranos this one is titled I Dream of Genie Kusumano let's get into the reaction let's have some fun with this thing let's see what's in store for us let's go Got yourself a gun. I'm interested to see when they decide to pull the trigger on Tony figuring out Uncle June and Livia's plans. Okay. Uh, whether it be this do. season finale we'll or whether that's dice, too man. early a little bit. And they drag it Jimmy, on for a bit. This answers your concerns? I think a lot of good ground was covered. Okay. I guess that's it. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get the tickets. I got him around. You don't want them. Fuck, the Rangers are gonna lose anyway. You're right, it's him. All of a sudden, it's for me to discuss shit we already covered. It's when or why. Gotta be 110% sure. Okay. Oh, sure the okay. Make sure you send a message to everybody else. That told me you hate the fucking Russians. I had a two needle pricks Junior brought around to pound my ass with Russian. For a while I was bitter. But Tony's Guma is Russian. You couldn't ask for a nicer person. <laughs> These two tonight are friends of hers. I got enough cologne on. You smell like Paco Raban crawled up your ass. <laughs> the Big oh, up Paco Raban. I got a couple right there. <laughs> now you're gonna be glad I got you out of bed tonight. Russian boo boos. You go for some basic foreplay, they'll detail your car. How's the hygiene over there? I don't know. This is here. You didn't even let me put anything decent on. Here we are. Hotel rooms are the place where people get taken out. <laughs> oh, sorry, apartments. That's me, baby. Oh, is Tatiana here? I'll go get her. Right, Jimmy? Yeah, that's right. I'm Jimmy. Big tits, little feet, hitting any man's league. Have a seat. Jimmy about to get taken out, man. Oh, by Salvia. Fucking punk ass pieces of shit. Would you forget our captain? Why don't you call for help in your radio mic, you fucking rat? Oh, God. What's the matter? Not wearing one tonight? Nah. He didn't have time to put on anything decent. God. Get the piano, Dolly. Just like that. Just like that. I remember Tony telling Paulie, you need 110% proof. I need the wire seen on him. And yeah, there were possibly a little few. Like, I don't know if we're going to really ever find out who was truly the rat, whether it'd be. Um, whether it was Pussy, whether it was Jimmy, maybe it was both, like I was saying in episode, um, 11. Um, but they didn't find the concrete evidence, like the wire, the proof of it. Maybe, maybe Jimmy was just a little bit, um, maybe he just wanted to get his operations clear, or maybe he wanted to just clear things up, have those uh, urgent meetings. Um, but there were, there were a few little breadcrumbs there or pieces of evidence that pointed towards, um, Jimmy being the rat, but they, they it wasn't the 110% that Tony was looking for. I don't know. Come on, stop. I want to watch. Mm. Oh! Was that your back gate? Who is this guy? Yeah, it's probably nothing. Come here. That's what people always say in these creepy mm -hmm. movies. And the last thing I need is for your parents to come home and your dad sees my Dominican ass. Oh, you're going to get your ass whooped. Jesus, fuck! 
just saw my grandmother go by the window. How'd she get here from her nursing home? I... Kiki, tell, tell what? my sister to open the door. What Grandma, were you doing, me, Anthony, Anthony Jr.? Jr.? Well, you've got whooping cough. Get yourself under the vaporizer. Holy shit. Grandma, Aunt Satimi is dead. It's me, Meadow. Such a brute. Grandma, it's Meadow, remember? Come sit down. Yes. Meadow. Oh. Yeah, Olivia I needs to go to one of those hospitals. House, honey bunch. Not while that fat brute is in here. Come on, Grandma. Let's go see who it is. We got a complaint from your neighbors of a woman wandering. She's my grandmother. Hi, Grandma. Oh. I... Ah, shit. You know <laughs> of course. He's... Dory memory. He's my, my grandson. And is this your house, dear? Where was she trying to get to? Shrefs. She's being retested. For Alzheimer's. It's been a long odyssey with your mother, hasn't it? All these last 500 years just seemed to race by. <laughs> 500 years. <laughs> Listen to me. It's okay. What is that? They're transferring her to the nursing unit, which is the thing that she dreaded and feared. Isn't it interesting how this memory loss is cropped up right after you failed to be killed in the carjacking? You know what? Melfi asked you all the real the questions. Carjacking? Of course not. But I got an idea who was behind it, and enough said. <laughs> enough said. You don't want to go there. Do you think? Uh, I think it's me possibly kind of being cynical, but I just feel like at points in this show there there is evidence to suggest that Livia is very aware of what is going on, and she may be intentionally pulling off this episode just to you know. Um, make it seem as if she had no idea to as to what was going on or maybe to indicate that she had no idea as to what was being said um but it could be that she clearly suffers from these um uh, from these disabilities here yeah, maybe like alzheimer's or um memory loss I, i'm not i'm not too sure i'm not sure or she's actually deliberately acting like that i i i can't pinpoint it sometimes because i feel like the actress who plays livia is so well at hiding it she does she's I don't know. I don't know. I'm just... It's hard to get a read on her sometimes. Maybe you don't want to go there. What are you talking about? Well, let's track it. Right around the time of the shooting, you were having hallucinations of that Isabella figure, the protective, loving Being mother. mother. <laughs> Your subconscious was shouting something at you. On the day before the shooting, you said to me that she kept going on and yet again about news stories of mothers throwing their babies out of windows. Well, why don't we put our fucking cards on the table here? Yo, Milfie! What, what the heck, man? My mother tried to have me whacked because I put her in a nursing home. In your worst dreams, a duck flies off with your penis. Castration. Hey, my mother never went after my basket. No, not literally. Look. Ordinarily, a patient is helped to make his own breakthroughs, but your life is in danger. So, okay, I'm willing to put the cards on the table. I say what your mother has, at the very least, is what we call borderline personality disorder. A borderline personality disorder. Let me read to you from the DSM-4, okay? Definitions of the condition. A pattern of unstable relationships. Affective instability. Yo, she did the... It means intense anxiety, a joylessness. These people's internal phobias are the only things that exist to them. The real world, real people are peripheral. Interesting These that Melfi's the no one planting the seed about... Borderline personalities are very good at splitting behavior, creating bitterness and conflict between others in their circle. You twisted fucking bitch. That's my mother we're talking about, not some fuck up in Attica. Stab you in the shower. Nice. See, we're through, you and I. We're finished. And you're lucky if I don't break your fucking face in 50,000 pieces. Okay. I mean, 
let's face it. The the switch up right there. I've always talked about Tony's switch ups and how he could go from like a friendly figure to this menacing monster in the matter of like milliseconds. And that was one of the best I've seen in the series so far. And um, I don't know. I just love the subtle details, the little spit going on Melfi's face from Tony's mouth right there. Um, and him, obviously he's getting worked up about um, his mother being accused by Melfi, but it could be a thing. And I think you've seen before when insane ideas or like when crazy ideas get put in Tony's head, you see these overreactions sometimes. You saw it with Artie um, in the situation of, you know, telling Tony not to kill um, uh, the, the, the soccer coach. And you see he had an outburst with Artie. But when he had time to think over things and, you know, mellow over them, he, he realized, you know what, Artie's right. Maybe this time I don't hurt somebody and I can take a back seat and let things play out. Let, just, let the justice system prevail. You saw that overreaction to Artie sort of... Uh, Artie telling Tony not to do the hit and then here you saw that overreaction yet again with Dr. Melfi um, in telling you know Tony that you know possibly your mother could be suffering from um, uh, is it split personality disorder or bipolar I think or like whatever it was um, and Tony overreacted yet again but maybe when Tony gets time to over uh, to sort of dwell on things and think things maybe um, he will realize you know what Dr. Melfi, you're right. But it's this un uncontrollable urge he has um, to, you know, link it at people um, when someone from his family is targeted or when sort of things are said that he doesn't resonate with or doesn't like. Jackie's work is what killed him. All that Ajra brought on the... I don't know. I just love that switch up right there here. I want to watch it again. You saw him like... Between I feel like this was sort of like a coping circle. mechanism to control things and then he lashed out. Twisted fucking bitch. That's my mother we're talking about. Not some fuck up in Attica. Stab you in the shower. See, we're through, you and I. Melfi was... And you're lucky if I don't break your fucking face in 50,000 pieces. She's shaking. You can see your hands as well. Or her fingers, sorry. That was... Oh, so good. So well done. So well done. Ladies, compliments of the house. Bucati Matriciana. Marty, you want a pair of hippos to walk out of here? That's important. <laughs> Shut in there. <laughs> Marty, if I say I like this place better than the old Vesuvio. A few bucks to be ironed out. And the one in your salad, that was a freak occurrence. My produce man, he's the most expensive in the area. <laughs> the insurance really came through. Yes, it did. <laughs> Pick up Artie. Oh, Let's go. about Tony's mom? Kiara was talking to Meadow in school. Yeah, it looks like Alzheimer's. Oh, boy. Yeah. The attempted carjacking. Hey, well, yeah. I'll let you eat. Okay. Enjoy. Thanks, Artie. I like Artie, man. I like Artie. Oh my God, look who's here. Oh my God, look who's here. <laughs> you hiding back here? Your best friend's on table 12. When are you going to bury the hatchet? Arthur, I love Camilla like his sister. We just don't want this place to become another mob hangout like the old Vesuvio. When are you going to get it into your head that a certain amount of that kind of patronage creates buzz? Artie, that kind of buzz we should avoid in droves. <laughs> the bug's at it again. Della Croce's gave me a gift certificate. It's part of Artie's opening promotion. You will not believe the food. And that's what I hear. Mm. Well, I, well, I haven't done it yet. Is that Jackie's watch? Thanks again, Rob. What a film, man. I, I don't like this guy. I think... Did you sense a little bit of jealousy there from Carmela with Father Phil touching um, Ro? I don't know. A little bit of affection and Carmela was like, oh. <laughs> We're going to stumble upon a body. Yep. Mr. Soprano was kind enough to come with us. Yeah, when you threatened to wait till my kids got home. I'm sure Agent Harris explained that there's something we'd like you to hear. The Springsteen box set. I already got it. <laughs> you know Agent Grasso, I believe. Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> Tight ass. <laughs> oh no, ass wide open, I think. I, I, I searched up the phrase after. <laughs> As we both know, there's been an attempt on your life. You have enemies. I'd say it's a safe assumption that you may have finally run out your string here in North Jersey. The lovely Agent Harris and I have had this conversation. I'll pass. You haven't heard what's on the tape. 
Why not play it? Because I don't give a fuck what's on it. I understand you and Agent Grasso had an interesting colloquy about our uh, shared heritage. Call a who? You and I are not combata, Tony. You on the one hand, me and Agent Grasso on the other. Even though our ancestors all hail from the same sunny peninsula. What the fuck is your problem? But we do share some cultural ideas. Religious, culinary, matriarchal. Maybe we can motivate you to testify. Well, why don't you get the kumquats out of your mouth and get to the fucking point? Because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Agent Harris, <laughs> continually looking disappointed. Did they have a wire in the nursing home? God only knows what he says. You wired Green Grove. Must have really taken me for an idiot. It was my idea. Everyone else thought it was a waste of money. Nah, that was a good idea. Fair, fair play, fair play. <laughs> my cousin Kiki, after he had his lobotomy, he looked exactly like my son. Olivia. Empty, a shell. Better Kiki. Hundred and ten percent. have their mothers in this place if this is true Livia you know what I I mean I'm the boss for Christ's sake if I don't act blood or no I have to I, I love I love how here there's a I love how we have this shot here we've had this sort of like um, it's like a medium close-up shot of Tony's face um, and obviously he's in the left hand side of the frame um, and you have Grasso in the background out of like out of focus and then as the tape plays you cut to the like the reverse shot and the camera is slowly pulling in to Tony's face on like a close-up shot it's slowly pulling in but the other side of the face is occupied in this shadow then you see his little expression as some of the um, as some of the sort of recordings are being played he closes his eyes like He's holding it in. I can't believe this is happening right now. Like you see, you get that sort of sense and um, he's just pondering things. And I love how the opposite side is obviously the shadow um, because I feel like that's the monstrous thoughts going to his mind at the moment. And then obviously this is the light side. <laughs> the composure right there to hold it in. Arthur Bugo. That's right. <laughs> Victoria's boy. That's right. Yeah, you and, and my Johnny used to play Little League together. No, Johnny was your husband. <laughs> but you're right about the Little League. That was me and Tony. Your my son. son. That's right. Yeah. Oh, gee. What's the matter with me? <laughs> oh, I feel like she's aware of it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, how are you, Arthur? Never been better. You know, Christopher last episode talked about the Academy Award. <laughs> Possibly to Livia. I don't know. I, I I shouldn't be making fun of like Alzheimer's and no, I'm not making fun of it, but like it's just Olivia. So I just there's been hints like in the season that you know that she's aware of what she's saying, and it's sort of like that that sort of oh. I don't want you to do this, but, um, I don't mean what I'm saying, but like, it's just like, I'm not saying this, but I am saying this. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It's such a complex character. Tonight, what's the matter? Yeah, you know, Tony said it. If she was born after those Somebody feminists, said... she'd be the real gangster. <laughs> You're a good boy, Arthur. Coming to visit me. We go back a ways. You made a mean PB and J. <laughs> After what my son did to you, oh, how can I look you in the face? I think the personality disorder is, I think the personality disorder is there. Um, we've seen it in the flashbacks in terms of like the switch up she had with how she mistreated Tony and how cruel she was to him. You know, we saw that when she pointed the fork in his face or threatened to stab him in the eyes with it. Um, the personality disorder as well, I think with her 
um, switching up on Johnny, her husband, when she talked about how great he was and how nice he was, uh, how nice he was when we've seen the flashbacks and we've seen like what he was and what he was capable of. So I think the personality disorder is there. Tony. <laughs> oh no! Don't tell me about the. What did he do now? Is she gonna talk about the fire? You don't blame him for setting oh, the fire. No. Well, you're a bigger man than some. Now we should all be grateful that this this woman is the definition of creating chaos. Incinerated to death. No, no! Oh my gosh, man! Our theory's weakest tonight. I phoned in a bomb scare. You know, that's over the top. <laughs> that's over the top. <laughs> Grown uncle. Now let's do it right. Act normal. Plan things out. Make no mistakes. If I'm your uncle, I gotta finish what I start. <laughs> you strike first. Yeah, and he won't use boys to mend this time. <laughs> I okay, wow. You know, Mikey's now too high up. So Chucky's gotta disappear without setting off any alarms. Until we go. That's my Coast Guard test. To the end of the road. <laughs> hey, anything else? My ear hurts. I love Sylvia's suits. I don't know why. My ear hurts. I'm hearing too much bullshit. That's why. <laughs> or too much truths. The problem is not with you. That woman is a peculiar duck. She always has been. Yeah, but that's not the point. You know, and she's gotten worse with age. You think my mother didn't warn me about her on my wedding night? Please, don't start with that again. <laughs> Your sisters left New Jersey so young, you would have thought they were contracts out on them. I wonder if Tony's sisters are going to play a part in this show. You tried to make it work. Well, Janice has been teased. <laughs> Two pricks with nine millimeters. My self-esteem is non-existent right now. Well, I could kill her. With these two hands. The next time I see her, it's going to be... You got to play the concerned daughter-in-law. You got to stay even keeled for the sake of the business. Oh, fuck the business. And let me tell you something, Tony. Dollars to donuts, this Alzheimer's thing is an act. So she can't be called on a shit. Carmela's calling it out. Uncle June and I, we had our problems with the business. But I never should have asked him about eating pussy. This whole war could have been averted. Cunnilingus and psychiatry brought us to this. That is true. <laughs> to see a shrink because of the mother you had. When I look at the guys now, all I feel is humiliation. I'll take care of my uncle. And I'll take care of Mikey P. And I'll get some satisfaction. But inside, I'll know. I love that long extended take right there. The camera slowly panning across and then holding steady for that medium shot as Carmela and Tony are discussing things. And then one take. Beautiful. Let it play out. No cutaways. Relax. The fuck you doing here? Taking us to God's. Put in the marina next door. No shit. Look at oh. this baby. I caught right up the point here. <laughs> We're not going for silences. Okay, everybody. Okay, okay. He did. <laughs> everybody getting hit this episode, man. It's not, it's, it's not a hit, it's a hit. It's hits upon hits. All of Uncle Jun's crew has got to go. All of them. Hey, the capo. <laughs> the captain of the ship. Who's really driving it now? I, no, just wait a minute. Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> look, look, I need to talk to you. Oh, no. I'm dialing 911 because you've given me no choice. Come on. If anything happens to me, they're going to hear everything. I right, look, you want to talk? We'll go down to a coffee shop. There's plenty of people around. Emergency services. Man. Hey, I need to talk to you. Do I have your word that I'm in no physical danger? Yes, I am humbled that you would take my word. <laughs> what? Oh, fuck me. Yes, you got my word. <laughs> Come on. Hello? Hello? Won't they still visit? Like, if you call and hang up, won't they still check up on the place and send someone still? Because that's happened to me before. Oh, God. 
Yes, it has happened to me before. We were little kids, we were like four or five, and we decided to call triple zero as a prank call, and the cops still rocked up. Oh, the, the, the talking to I got from my dad. We were just playing with the next door neighbor's kids at my grandparents' house, and we're like, yeah, let's call triple zero. Let's uh, We just called, hung up, and the two cops still rocked up. Just to double check. Um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a highlight of... <laughs> oh, yo, when you do that with Arab parents... Take no pleasure in the fact that I was right about your mother. Listen, well, like, I think I was like five or six, I think. Since you heard the FBI and the neighbor's you. kid was a bit older. He was more aware of what he was doing. I think he was like 12 or something. And we're like, yeah, 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 it's so fun. Let's do it. Involving? My neighbor. Cinque Mano. Go on. Oh, we're doing it, doggy stuff. You know, Jean. That's okay, go on. Oh, yeah, she does. I'll do having dinner style. with her. <laughs> and I finish, you know, and a big ass. Is... Oh, look, we don't got time for this shit. Well, it's interesting that you would say a big ass because Gene is quite slender. We got bigger things to talk about than Gene Cusamano's ass. Like feelings of worthlessness sparked by your mother's plot to have you killed? One of the reasons that they tried to have me clipped is because I'm seeing a shrink. You. Oh. I I think I think that Melfi by this point like I maybe she knew from episode one um about Tony but I think like by now it's certain that she knows about him and what he is or like what he's involved with and um you see that reaction of oh from Melfi right there I think she potentially is gonna get protection from Tony or has to get out. You know that patient doctor conversation is privileged and I couldn't testify against anybody. Well, maybe they know that. And maybe they don't. Either way, they're using it as a fucking excuse. You never oh. mentioned any of your associates by name. All except for that uh, one fellow, uh, Booty? Pussy. Pussy. Pussy <laughs> Booty. I don't know his last name. <laughs> and look, anything concerning your Uncle Junior... Uh, shut the fuck up a minute. You're in danger. Get out of here. That's not fair. I love how she's yeah, holding her left hand because she's got the scissors up fans. her sleeves. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Leave town today, right now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get some guys here to stay with you until you get on a plane. I can't just do that, lamb it. I have a life. I have patience. Well, you tell them August came early this year. It doesn't work <laughs> that way. I have patients who are suicidal. Well, they're not going to feel any better about their life if you get clipped. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Melfi, let it go. Frozen I'm style. Work on this problem with the people that pose a threat to you, and I'll take care of it, and you'll be able to come back. People are gonna get murdered, aren't they? Don't worry about those distractions. You keep your <laughs> eye on the ball. And I know what you're thinking. You have no idea what I'm thinking. You're thinking you're gonna go to the cops, but they're not gonna help you because you can't give them anything. Don't be stupid, even in the short term. Get the fuck out of town. But can't the patient, like, client privilege be broken if something illegal is going on? You've been a good doctor to me. Thank you. Surely that's not the final goodbye. You've been a good doctor to me. Thank you. When you blew up the restaurant, you made me party to a criminal conspiracy. Did you ever stop to think about that? I don't know what she told you, my mother, of all people. We're gonna switch up on his mother now. Investigators gave that fire a clean bill of health, Artie. Why the fuck would I blow up your restaurant? To help me! You fucking bent psycho! You hear your uncle's gonna hurt my business by staging a hit in my place, and that's your solution? To burn it down for the insurance money! What kind of stupid, sick, twisted logic? Ask yourself a question Am I that fucking stupid? Am I that fucking stupid? Really? My mother. God bless her. It's going senile, Adi. And you saw her. I love my new place so much. And this ruins everything. I swear to God. I didn't touch your place, Adi. My mother was confused. 
Look me in the eye. I mean, he didn't Tell physically me. touch his place. You didn't lay a finger on my place. Tony didn't specifically do it. I didn't burn down your restaurant. I swear, my mother. I didn't, but my boys did. <laughs> Take it easy! Uh, what the fuck you doing? Get together if we don't for a regular Sunday dinner. Or somebody uh, knows we could have a joint. This dinner is going to be crazy. Joint. Yo, Scorsese said it. Cinema. Come on. You got to admit it, Ma. It's a nice nursing unit where they let you be signed out for family occasions. I don't have to admit anything. I got to leave in 10 minutes. Meadow. Well, I don't want dessert and I have to study with Hunter. Is this poor cooked? Kids are growing up. they will be out of the house soon. Even go Gucci over there. If you believe she's going to study, I got a bridge to sell you. You know, I read last week in the <laughs> paper <laughs> about this family in St. Louis Obispo in California. That whole family died of trichinosis. That's uncooked pork. That was last year. That same family. Listen to him. He knows everything. Oh, he does. <laughs> he does at the moment. For the foreseeable future, he does. So, Uncle June, what do you hear from your lawyer on the big thing? Hey, on and on it goes. Ma, don't you agree they should not talk business at the table? What's going on in your little corner of the world? Such as? I don't know, the State of the Union. So I hear Artie Bucco came to see you. Who is Artie? And the Oscar goes to? Anthony. Is Anthony Friend wearing the spawn shirt again? Elementary school. <laughs> he owns a restaurant. They had a little fire in it. Came to see me? Where? where? Where are we talking about? Here? <laughs> God, I love this show. God, I love this show. Sorry, I'm fucking late. Okay. I need to tell Silvio, you Silvio, man. <laughs> and I want you to hear from me. Not from some asshole on the street. I'm seeing a shrink. About four or five months ago, I started seeing a psychiatrist. You know, I was passing out and uh, they couldn't find nothing. She's been helping me with that. Okay, come on, give it to me. Give it to my face, <laughs> come on. I don't know why it's so frowned upon, but in those type of families, I, I know it's like a sign of weakness, well, I'm but sure still. You did it with complete discretion. And uh, speaking for pussy, if he's still alive, I'm sure he would agree. Business was not discussed. No names were mentioned. Junior knows. He's decided to use it against me. It's now, because we're not discussing this again. Now's the time. <laughs> it's not the worst thing I ever heard. <laughs> I was seeing a therapist myself about a year ago. Oh, poor Lee coming clean? I had some issues. Enough said. I learned some coping skills. <laughs> Look, uh, this thing of ours, the way it's going be better if we could admit to each other uh, these are painful, stressful times. Well, it'll never fucking happen. I, I think, I think we've solidified this as like the core four. If you've seen the latest screen films, they call themselves the core four. But I think this is the real core four that might be, unless I'm... Unless I'm really wrong, I think this core four could potentially carry the show um, for the rest of the six seasons. Um, you never know. We might get so attached to these guys. Obviously, there's going to be some collateral damage along the way. But it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, with this core four here, this new circle. It's not a new circle they've established, but like the... 
you know, the main guys they've established, who they let into this circle in the future. Like, who is going to earn their trust so much that they're allowed in? Because obviously, we've we've had to take out one of like they've had to take out one of their own in Jimmy with not the hundred and ten percent solidified proof that he was wearing a wire. Maybe his reaction this episode did, um, you know, lean towards that. Like he's reacting, God, God, like maybe that. Um, Pussy, we still have no idea what's happened with him, but it's gonna be interesting to see if they introduce other characters, and I think they will, um, and who gets let into this, and who has to earn their trust, and like how much they have to do to earn their trust. What about you? You got a problem with this? Uh, what was it like, uh, marriage counseling? Yeah, like that. Sort of, yeah. Commandant was trying to scare us priests. That's so dangerous down there. This man is always eating. Oh, Richard the Checo. Ah, uh, the fresh basil really. Here, two-faced priest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does he have no? He doesn't. He doesn't have his own money for food. He always leeching. No, please, have so much money. Taking advantage of women. Carmela just walk out, man, for the better. Stuff, yeah, in the trash. That, that, that's where he belongs. If you want, I'll do it as I see them. Good, great, thanks. All right. She catches on fast, that one. Very conscientious. I love how love, I love how in the scene before, um, Arthur was the one, or Artie was the one wearing red when he visited Father Phil, and now it's the complete opposite. Um, his wife is the one that's wearing red because she potentially might go in a fit of rage here because Artie was seeing red um, in that interaction with Father Phil a little bit, um, even though he was like whispering and obviously containing his volume levels. I feel like once he tells his wife he out, and if he does, um, she might go in a fit of rage. To become a music manager. <laughs> We're still going on with that. <laughs> Shout out, Janice. Everything is going so good. The new exterminators? I got faith. The owner is Portuguese. They're sticklers. I feel so wonderful. We're up and running again. Aww. Oh, you said you had something to tell me. I like the boss tools. <laughs> hey, happy wife, happy life. She's happy, just let it be. Good morning, everybody. You're in a good mood today, Dad. <laughs> and if Chucky calls, you get me on his cell phone. Ho! Oh, you hear me? Yeah, okay. I think that I heard you already. Go take a mite all. The way Mikey treats his wife, man. Like, get out of here. Nicknaming her Ho. Like, why? <coughs> the morning jog. <laughs> that was a nice warm up. Couple. That stretches right there. <laughs> I mean, you're asking to get hit jogging down this path. Mikey isn't strapped up. I was about to say, like, I thought maybe for a second he might have been, but... Motherfucker! <laughs> it's over. Oh, come on, please! Please, come on! Come on! Oh, come on! Oh, please! Please! Fucking poison ivy all over. <laughs> Fucking poison My ivy all Brenton, over. You shot him in his bathtub naked. No chance to run. No, I swear to God, it wasn't me. It was Junior. He hated that kid. It was him. Yeah, right. It was Junior. Mr. Oh, Magoo. Oh, come on. Please. Please, please. I can oh, feel it itching oh. me already. 
Yeah, man, I kind of like the energy Mikey brought to some scenes. Sad scene, go. This early on. Corrado Soprano, FBI. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Are you Lawrence Barisi? Oh, what the fuck? Joseph Sasso, you're under arrest. Junior Soprano, alleged boss of the New Jersey crime family that bears his name, was indicted today on federal racketeering Aww. charges. FBI the hit didn't go out. Talk about fucking timing. He's lucky he's Maddie still alive. Soprano, Look at the old guy making him do the perp walk. A legitimate businessman. Dad, cut the crap. <laughs> I'll dry your hair. <laughs> These indictments are part of an ongoing investigation stretching back nearly four years. They represent the most crippling blow to mob activities in the New Jersey area since the early 1980s. The junior got busted. According to authorities I've cool. spoken with here, not cool. the male <laughs> named in the indictments was alleged Soprano enforcer and loan sharking chief Michael Grabbag Palmisi. Authorities believe Palmisi may have fled the New Jersey area, acting on prior knowledge. Oh, lucky him. Earlier today, Palmisi's wife denied any knowledge of her husband's whereabouts. Oh, lucky him. Yeah, he was, uh, he was so happy. He was going out to try out his new running shoes, you know. And, um, he told me that he loved me and that he would be right back. <laughs> I said, I can't. I go. Come on. Go eat somewhere else. Hey, Carmela thinking right there, because that could be her on the news. Hello. Yeah, hey, Counselor, thanks for getting back to me so quick. Storm not case yet. An ongoing investigation, the DA said. They always say that to make it sound good. This is no fucking joke. All I gotta worry about now is the guys that got pinched today, if they flip. It's all going down. You prefer Corrado or Junior? I prefer Mr. Soprano. Your tenure as boss was a short one. Uh, actually, it was unusual in several ways. Let me put this to you as simply as I can. You can avoid sentencing on these charges if you will testify that, in fact, you were not the boss of North Jersey. That, in fact, your nephew, Anthony Soprano, was and is. Oh, Woo! That he, de facto, controlled your capos. Ego check. Of two of the New York families communicating through their emissary, John Sacramoni. Ego check. We want Johnny Sack. But more than him, we want Mangano and Teresi. Are they the New York brothers? Andrew Dickinson. See who gets lucky first. <laughs> we want you to corroborate information that we obtained through informants and wiretap. That you were allowed to profit more or less. But you were not making policy and you were not in the New York loop. You were positioned to take the hits and now you've taken them. Question is, how long are you gonna keep eating shit? Yeah, Saul Goodman up in this bitch. We need to get these guys out. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> 70 years old. How many years you got left? My nephew running things? Not that Struens. Not in this life. Good and bear it. Hey, hey. good and bear it. Yeah, let me slap that. Find the home! You got any more in the car? Uh-uh. How did you get in here? Liliana. She said to tell you that she left early. So what they're saying on the TV about the storm that's headed this way, huh? Yeah. You want some coffee? Coffee? You're making it. So what we were talking about a few months back. Think any of these recent developments have brought Tony any closer to re-examining his life? This guy thinks this is his own house. Choices? I told her she was not to use my card again. No, that's mine. One true thing, just out on DVD. I was over at Video One anyway. I thought maybe you might want to take your mind off these stressors. Something wrong, Carm? Just tell me so I know how many stakes to defrost. Tony's not going <laughs> to make it. Well, if, as I was saying, my real concern for Tony... Father, the, the way he plays things out. Flying fuck. You know it and I know it, at least for the foreseeable future. And then that's even a bigger reason. He's a sinner, Father. And you come up here, and you eat his steaks, and you use his home entertainment center. Carmela, 
the DVDs for you. Really? Even after just last week, I told you I'm not a big Renee Zellweger fan. You did? I, I, I don't remember that. You want to watch one true thing? Fine. At least admit it. I, I, I thought you liked movies. Me or Coppola. Jesus, you know, I get exactly the same who me shit with Tony. Two I don't need. <laughs> Has Tony thought about changing? Father, please. You do think I'm a schnorrer, don't you? Uh, a, a parasite. I think that you like the, I don't even know what to call it, the uh, whiff of sexuality. That never goes any place. I have feelings for you, Carmela. I admitted it. It's my job to deal with them so I can carry on my pastoral duties. How does Rosalie Apriel fit into your feelings for me? Oh. So that's it. I really appreciate everything that you've done for me, Father Phil, truly. The but the door is that way. The book on Buddhism. The wonderful chats. I am very fond of you. More than fond. But I think you need to look at yourself. Call this an intervention. <laughs> I think you have this MO where you manipulate spiritually thirsty women. And I think a lot of it is tied up with food somehow. Yeah, a lot of food. Well the sexual tension game. A lot of food. Whoa. Get out of here. Big up Carmella for calling it out. Nah, he knows. Oh, Mr. Soprano, your wife found you good. I was about to say, he, he, he wasn't planning on checking out Livia or suffocating her, sorry. left a message on your home machine. Your mom's had a stroke. Stroke? The news on TV yesterday, it really upset her. Not that it's any of my business. Anyhow, it just happened. The MTs are stabilizing her for the ride to St. Vincent's. I know what you think. Sir, please. The only son, the middle child. Look, she can't answer you, husband. Yo, man said it was middle child like J. Cole right there. What <laughs> the hell? Percent has been affected. Yeah, my ass. Heard the tapes, ma. The fucking FBI tapes. Don't tell Woo! me what you're talking hey. about. George Clooney, don't get in the fucking middle of this. Mr. Soprano, Alonzo, call you security. Your Uncle June's in jail now. And I got one more little last detail I gotta take care of. Mr. Soprano! I'm gonna tell you I don't die that fucking easy, ma. I'm gonna live a nice, long, happy life, which is more than I can say for you. All right, that's enough! Yeah. Keep her moving, keep moving! I try to do the right thing by you, and you try to be what? She doesn't understand you. She's smiling! Look at the look on her face! Look at the look on her face! She's smiling! Come on! Come on, off me! Come on, off me! Look at her face! She's got a fucking Come smile on. on her face! All right, it's enough! Yo, he, he gave her the Melfi treatment right there, going up close and personal. When they said a storm is coming, that didn't mean the weather. Alright? That didn't mean the weather. She go vacation! <laughs> she go vacation! Dad, hello. We're not going to make it to Aunt Patty. Why did I buy a goddamn off-road vehicle? To waste back on resources. <laughs> Tony, she's right. We can't keep driving in this. I can hardly see in front of us here. Oh, it's Artie's shop. Artie, thank Christ. We went to pick the kids up at school because of the buses and all. We can't get to the house. There's a huge tree across Mountain Avenue. Oh, my no. But oh! Seven o'clock. Nobody's eating none. Tony, I got no power, no lights. I'm, I'm closing Susie's last few people leave. Let's go to Mickey D's. They'll be open. Yeah, all right. Let's go. Let's go. No! Come on, what are you? Come, come on, on. Get it, get we'll it. figure out something. Come on. Oh, they gave me steroids too, but it fucked me up. Yeah, well, keep away from me, Glasgow, right? Oh, the poison ivy. <laughs> hey, what are you doing, Tom? Hey, hey, Artie's wife was talking about not this becoming, uh, this, be this not becoming a monster's hang around. Mobsters hang around, sorry. And here we go, Paulie, Silvio, Tony, his family, Janice, everyone's here. Christopher's here. How you doing? All the main players are here. How are you? So, guys, Kiara, her brother and sister, back in the kitchen. If you want to say hello, more refugees. 
it's the worst. I've been cooking by candlelight. I can make most anything on the menu except whatever you got is fine. Everyone's at the What's playground it? here. Cabernet por favor. Regal Alley, right? Yeah, beautiful. No cigars, please. <clears throat> Oh, it's Adriana. Why do I keep saying Janice? I'm so sorry, man. Oh, I knew it was Adriana, man. I like Adriana as well. I keep, why do I keep saying Janice? I keep saying, because the thing is, sister. The skip's seeing a psychiatrist. How does that sit with your ass? I usually do sit with my ass. Why don't you sit with yours? Hey, Pat Cooper over here. Wait a minute. This bothers you? You saw a fucking psychiatrist. Not a woman. <laughs> you can't get past that. It don't compute for me. You're the one with the fucking issues. Woman issues. I don't even want to fucking go there. Oh, well, that's not. Here, regardless, I said my piece. What are you getting at, Paulie? <laughs> Nothing. I wish I'm born a Fortuna. You guys have any peanut butter back here? That's looking good, Artie. I hope he didn't put bugs in it or like purposely. Oh, fuck. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Cap. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, Grace. I'd like to propose a toast. Oh, okay. We are not. We're not on that. We're not on that level yet. Someday soon, you're gonna have families of your own, and if you're lucky, you remember the little moments. Like this. That were good. Cheers. I love that cutaway to the corner shot right here. And um, who's that woman? Maybe she's just dining by herself. But I love that cutaway to the corner shot right here. And Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad used a lot of fantastic sort of placing the camera in sort of the corner of a room to get this beautiful sort of um, wide shot of everything that's in like that, that that's in the location. And this one did it perfectly again here. You got Adriana and Christopher, you know, making out being romantic got paulie and silvio sitting at their own table with Artie. this woman in the background and obviously you got the main family in the middle here all the main players i feel like that's our core that's our core group of characters right now and what a way to end the season because you have uncle june he's in prison now um livia has had a stroke and they're out of the game for a while but Uncle June might come back with a vengeance or, you know, he, he got away lucky. He's lucky he didn't get killed. Um, you know, family, family's still alive somehow. Obviously, June's crew got taken out, but family's still alive. And a lot of June's crew, I think two or three of their main players are in prison as well. Um, but yeah, what a fantastic episode. What a fantastic finale to end the season. And I feel like, you know, that, that, that shot right there. I, I I just I just love it because it's like okay these are the players this season that came out unscathed or like you know did not have any sort of um not ramifications but I guess you know the ones that the ones that stayed in town the one that still have a home here because Livia's she's in the hospital um with a stroke June's in prison Melfi even went on vacation, so these are the main players that remain and, you know, the ones that got away with it so far, so far. Um, and I, I don't know, I just love that final shot. It's such a cool final shot um, to have. And, you know, you have the little conversation going on with Paulie and Sylvia about what they think about Tony um, and what their thoughts are on him seeing a shrink, a woman shrink. But I don't know, I, I hope none of them turn on Tony in the future. It seems like they're, they're a good loyal crew. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see now that June's out of the equation how Tony's going to run things. And I feel like starting season two today. 
I feel like starting it. But yeah, I hope you guys have been enjoying these reactions. As always, be worthy Moses. Take care. God bless and peace. What a first season of Sopranos, baby. Let's go.